कैसे हो मैम वैक्सीन लिया आपने हाँ सर than I thought it was um, but I got these earbuds so hopefully audio quality will be better and I am trying to be more articulate um, so a lot of people asked why I'm depressed and that is not something I can answer um, properly because I don't exactly know in the past few years I've been piecing it together but I can't give you a straight answer as to why I'm depressed um, so we'll get into that later Today I wanted to talk to you about my privilege. Um, the last video was not cut off, it was intentional. Um, and I wanted to start, sorry, I wanted to start by uh, uh, laying out what my privileges are. For those of you who don't know me personally, you know me because I'm Amir Khan's daughter and therefore you know those sets of privileges that I have. I'm financially well off and I've always had everything that I could possibly need and probably more. Uh, in terms of those of you who know me personally, you also know that I have uh, a strong support system in the sense that my family has always been there for me, my parents have always been there for me, they don't put any pressure on us, they're very encouraging. I know that if anything were to happen, I could, without any hesitation, go to my parents um, and they would always be there for me. So that, I think, is another privilege to you know know that you have people to go to, to talk to if something were to happen. Um, the next thing that I wanted to talk about is that I have a 10 minute speech, three things that I would say to myself that I sort of ingrained into my thinking to deal with anything and everything that came my way. The first is that there are dying, starving children, people out there in the world and my problems really aren't so big. So I should be able to handle them. Uh, the second is that we are all tiny, inconspicuous, inconsequential living beings in the cosmos and I should stop taking myself so seriously uh, and move on. And the third thing is that no matter what is happening in my life right now, 5-10 years down the line, with time and perspective, it won't be such a big problem to me, it won't be such a big issue, so why am I fretting about it right now? And this is a very solid three point strategy to make yourself get over anything to the point where I didn't even let I didn't even get to the point where I got upset about something I didn't even get to the point where I was sad or anything I would just let go before I got there uh, I thought I had a day in Nirvana which I had not but anyway um, this is what I would do and um, so um, uh, between the time when my behavior started to change um, and the time that I asked for help was about three and a half years. And in those three and a half years, uh, I would still use this strategy um, and it did not help. So I stopped taking care of myself, I started sleeping uh, a lot and thinking it was normal. Um, or not realizing that I was sleeping so much. Um, I uh, used to keep myself either really, really, really busy uh, and then I slowly moved into immobility where I just did not leave my bed. I was making commitments and I was not being able to get myself to leave the bed to actually follow through with those commitments and then I would feel bad so I would stop making those commitments, giving me more time to stay in bed. Um, I started to isolate because I didn't want to be in a bad mood around my friends. I used to have a lot of control over my emotions, but suddenly I didn't have that control anymore and I didn't want to unnecessarily put them in a bad mood uh, because there was no reason for me to be in this bad mood. So there's no point telling them, there's no point talking to them. What will they say to me? Um, I used to daydream 
all the time and it went from that to me not being able to listen to music because I couldn't sit with myself listening to music. I had to be watching TV. That is the amount of distraction I needed so that I wouldn't stop crying. Uh, and crying was a big thing because I'm not the kind of person whose response to things is to cry. After 12, I stopped crying. And then suddenly at 17, I would stop crying. And it's still be that the number of times I cried began to increase and how long I cried for began to increase. And I did not know why I was crying. And it would just randomly happen in class. I'd start having tears and then I would feel like I was going to break down and howl, but I didn't want to because I were in class and we were discussing something completely not sad. Um, so I didn't know why I was crying. Um, and so over the years either, I mean, that whole time either I would ignore it or I would try and f rationally figure it out and deal with it myself. Um, and so towards the end of it, I was crying and I was feeling so bad that I was in this place where I was crying and I was not being able to do the things that I normally do. And I was just like, why is this happening? And so I would try and rationally figure it out. Um, what, are, what could I possibly be so upset about? What bad things have happened to me in my life? Um, when I was young, when I was small, my parents got divorced. Uh, but that to me doesn't seem like something that would traumatize me because my parents' divorce was amicable. Uh, they are friends. The whole family is still friends. We're not a broken family by any means. Uh, my parents were very good about being parents to Janelle and me even after the divorce. And when people would say, oh, I'm so sorry to hear about, you know, your parents being divorced, I'd be like, what are you talking about? Why is it? It's not a bad thing another privilege I didn't realize that it was a sad thing it could you know be a it could be something that could scar you it didn't it didn't scar me I, I don't remember most of it but I always felt like my divorce is my parents divorce is not something that bothered me so that can't be a reason why I'm feeling so sad uh, when I was six I got tuberculosis and now, you know, I've watched my dad's episode on Satya Mujate and I know that you can get TB and then strains of TB that are incurable and you have to cut your lungs out and it's a whole horrible, but I had TB outside my lungs and I had regular TB and I went to the hospital for four days and got to bunk school and watched TV all day. Uh, so for me, it was not such a big deal. It didn't scar me so much. So, you know, I got lucky, pretty easily dealt with that. Um, not something that would make me feel so terrible today. Um, when I was 14, I was sexually harassed, abused. Um, and that was a slightly odd situation in the sense that I didn't know whether the person knew what they were doing. I sort of knew them and wouldn't bring it up. It wasn't happening every day. So it took me about a year to be sure that they knew what they were doing and that is what they were doing. And immediately I wrote my parents an email and I got myself out of that situation. And once I was out of that situation, I didn't feel so bad anymore. I wasn't scared. I felt like this is not happening to me anymore and it's over. And I moved on and I let go. And yeah, from time to time, I would beat myself up about how I felt silly that I let it happen and all of that. But it was, again, not something that has scarred me for life and something that was going to make me, that something that could be making me feel as bad as I was feeling when I was, uh, 18 to 20 or whatever and so um, I don't want to be in school I'm feeling suffocated I'm not feeling good I'm crying I can't I can't tell my parents this or tell my friends this because they're gonna ask me why and I don't know why I have no reason to give you why I've thought through everything that has happened to me I've tried to find a reason and I don't have a reason to give you